Welcome, welcome once again to our worship service today. We come uh, today on our Resurrection Sunday, and we also come on our Communion Sunday. So come on in. We're going to lift up the name of Jesus. We're going to keep him lifted up. The Lord is blessing us during this pandemic. This pandemic, we bow at the five-yard line, trying to put this pandemic in our rearview mirrors. So we want everybody to get their vaccines and so we can go and be forward and be back in our church building before you know it. Uh, so let us pray. Oh, gracious God, we come once again to say thank you. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for how you have taken care of us uh, during this time of testing. Dear Heavenly Father, you know it's been almost about a year before we've had worship service in our building, but you have blessed us with technology. You have best blessed us with a new way to worship. And dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything that you've done. We thank you for giving us a vaccine in 10 months. But we also come to pray for over 500,000 families that have died with this virus since this time last year. Uh, but we just come to lift you up, dear Heavenly Father, and know that it's all in your hand. And we just want to thank you, dear Heavenly Father, because everything that's done for the good, according to your purpose, dear Heavenly Father, and we thank you for how you continue to bless us, Lord. In Jesus' magnificent name, we pray. Amen. Amen. On this Resurrection Sunday, we come now to call your attention to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. The Gospel, according to Dr. Luke, chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. Uh, for your hearing now, and my key verses, is centered around uh, verses 5 and verse 6 will be my key verse in this section. Verse 5 says, And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, and they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. Today we want to use for a theme, Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. We want to use this thing because at the core of the Christian gospel is that we have a savior that is alive. All of the great religions of the world have a God with a small g that's dead. But we come as Christians realizing that we serve a true and a living God. Yes, the last time that I checked, Buddha is dead, Confucius is dead, Muhammad is dead. So we see that we are the only religion that has a God that is alive, a God that is real. At the very core of our belief is a savior that is real and a savior that hears our cry. At the core of our belief system is our father, the creator, our, his son, Jesus Christ, the redeemer, and our Holy Spirit, the guide, and our paracletus. Uh, that's why, you know, we have a, as Christians, we know that we have a living Savior. And today I will teach that we come to worship the Christ, the risen Lord, the Son of the living God. So we come now. In our lesson text today, our background we show that the, the Jewish leaders, the Pharisees and the Sadducees have become jealous uh, with Jesus. And uh, after he raised Lazarus from the dead, uh, when I preached about that the last time, so they knew now that he was from God, but, but they had to stop him. Yes, people who are jealous of you will stop you. Now remember, the Pharisees and the Sadducees were enemies but they got together to get rid of Jesus. And that's the same thing that your enemies would do if you don't watch them. Uh, you remember my sermon about backstabbers. So, so you see here that we have a few backstabbers here. So now we see that uh, in our lesson text, Pilate uh, wanted to let Jesus go. When they brought him, Pilate sent him to Caiaphas and Caiaphas sent him back and back and forth. He had six trials and all of them were illegal. But now we see Pilate has to make this decision. And yes, I want you, you to know that the decision that Pilate made about the crucifixion of Jesus was a political decision. Pilate wanted to keep his position as governor, but he realized that he was, had to deal with these Jewish leaders 
that was so adamant about crucifying Jesus. They, they even cried out for Barabbas, a known criminal, to let him go. Pilate thought he had a, he'd had an out when he could release one person, but they say, no, 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 give us Barabbas and let us crucify Christ. So, so, so we see him now that we come up to this point where Pilate is going to crucify Jesus. And we see, we know that he washed his hands in doing this because his wife has warned him about not to deal with this, this Jesus. So we see here that in our lesson text, uh, we come up uh, to when, after when Jesus had been crucified, this issue of him being alive, that's why it's so important that Christians realize what Easter is all about. It's not about Easter eggs and baskets. It's about serving a living, hallelujah, a living Savior, a Savior that is alive and a Savior that hears us and a Savior that is there for us and a Savior that's been through a lot of the things that we face on the contemporary scene. So now we come up to our lesson text uh, and we see how now, and also I want to emphasize how important these women were. And that's why we see that women are very important in the church today. We, we couldn't have church without the women of the church. Uh, so we see now how important these women were because they were the first ones to carry the message. And as we can see in our lesson text, they carried the message, but who believed it? And we come up to chapter 24. And now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came, talking about the women, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. These were women, and we're going to see in, in verse 10, they're going to name them, but they come up, they got up early in the morning. They're coming now because they didn't embalm the bodies, so they're coming now to put all of these spices and all of these things in Jesus' bodies, and they're going to, to, to wrap him up in this linen, and they're going to put him in the grave site. But, but they got up early in the morning because they're now going to come coming to prepare the body. They're coming there, and they've been also wondering about how are they going to get. See, sometimes when you get ready to do something for God, you don't have to worry about what's going to happen when you get there. They just got up, and they just started. They didn't know how the stone was going to be rolled away. And they found that the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. When they got there, they found that this stone has been rolled away from the sepulchre. Uh, my first point that I'm going to look at today is, my first point, number one, is the empty tomb, verses 1 through 3. My second point, my second point is the glad message, verses 4 through 9. Uh, and my third point is the messengers. And my last point is disbelief. So we see now they come up to this tomb, and this tomb is empty. Uh, also, we see here they found an empty tomb, and they that entered in and found not the body of Jesus. You know, as they come up to, to this tomb, we, we knew that they had had two earthquakes, but they had had an earthquake. Now, an earthquake that was centered around where the tomb was, the second earthquake, it was only around where the tomb was. So, so now we see uh, that, 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 that these angels come, and you're going to see in the next verse, and it came to pass that as they were, and, and as they were much perplexed, there about, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Now we see here that after the earthquake, uh, these angels come, and they're, they're, they're sitting there by the tomb. The tomb is open. But the angels are the ones that's going to speak to these women when these women come there to, to, to anoint Jesus' body. And the angels are going to speak to them. And the angels, and as they were afraid, they saw these angels. And, of course, you know, uh, when the celestials meet the terrestrials, we, we're going to be nervous. When we see a heavenly body, we, we're going to be nervous. So when they saw these angels with these shiny clothes on and all these kind of things sitting on, sitting on the tomb, and they were afraid, and they bowed down their faces to the earth, and they said, and then the angel said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Why are you coming seeking Someone who is alive. The, the, the angels knew that he was alive. Why? The angel said, why are you coming now uh, looking for, why are you coming? Now? You don't need those spices. You don't need all those things to anoint a body because there is no body. He is alive. He's not here. In verse 6, that's what they say. He's not here, but is risen. And then I like this part because he goes back and he reminds them 
of the things that Jesus had been preaching and Jesus had been telling them. You know, you can preach so much, so much to people, and will they ever believe you? I keep telling people in the church, no weapon formed against your pastor is going to prosper. But people still try to come up and try to tear up the church, but they ought to know that when God ordains, God is going to maintain. So that's what we need to understand. So, so, so they, Jesus had been preaching this. Jesus had been preaching this. And he, he said, he is not here, but he's risen. Remember how he spake unto you when you were yet in Galilee. He said, remember how Jesus talked to you. And you can go back to Matthew chapter 16, verse 21. Jesus told them that, that he was going to be betrayed and he was going to be put in the hands of evil men. Uh, in the hands of sinners, and on the third day, he was going to rise. He told them that in, in Matthew chapter 16, verse 21. He told them that again in, in Matthew chapter 17, verse 9. And then he told them that again in, 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 in Matthew chapter 20, verse 17 through 19. The angel said, I'm going to remind you of what Jesus had told you when he was in Galilee. He told you what was going to happen. So, so why are you coming here to anoint a body that he told you that on the third day morning that, that he was going to get up on the third day morning? He was going to change the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday and we're going to have resurrection Sunday. Jesus had been preaching this and Jesus had been teaching this. And then that seventh verse and saying. The son of man, this is what he said he told you. This is what he taught you. The, the angels is going gonna, is gonna to let you know what Jesus had been saying. And saying, the son of man must be delivered into the hands of sin for men and be crucified. And the third day rise again. Don't you remember how many times, how many times Jesus came and Jesus talked that to you. And then we see in verse 8 says, and they remembered his words. They, they, they recollected. They, they brought it back. They said, oh yeah. Oh yeah, Jesus told us how that, what was going to happen. And now we remember. You know, but in, if we caught up with all that crucifixion and all that pain that he went through, we, we, we maybe forgot. But these women remembered uh, and returned from the sepulchre and told all these things until the eleven. And to all the rest. Now, these, these women went out on a mission. They were so excited. They were so excited that Jesus was alive. You know, when, when, when you get something that you're excited about, you are so excited about it, you want to tell somebody. I don't care what it is. If you go to a good restaurant, you, you, you're so excited. I get excited about that. If I go to a good restaurant out with some people and I get so excited that I want to carry my wife back there. And when I carry her back there, guess what? The food is not so good the second time. But, but you know, you can be excited about something. You can be excited about something, not just a restaurant, but, but you can be excited about something in life. And if you're excited about something, you want to share that. And, and that's what these ladies was doing. That's what this glad message is about. And then they said who the women were. They were Mary Magdalene. You remember Mary Magdalene. She had been freed. From, from being possessed by seven demons. You can read about her in Luke chapter 8, verse 22. And also you can see Joanna. Uh, we see that Joanna was the wife of the steward and the manager of, of Herod, the king of, of Galilee. We see that these women were, were women in the community uh, that was prosperous women. We see here that uh, also there were some other women, Mary, uh, not Jesus' mother Mary, but the Mary, the mother of the apostle uh, they, they, they called him James, but he was the lesser James because they said he was, he was short. He wasn't a, one of the sons of Zebedee. But, but we see here now, we see here that these women, and they name them, and they don't name all of them, but they just name some of them. But they let you know that these women was carrying the message out. And they was carrying the message out all across. And then verse 11 says, and their words seemed to them as idle tales. Because they, these women was carrying the message and they carried it to the apostles. And they were with them when they, told these, when they told this unto the apostles. And now we get to a very sad part of this lesson today. Verse 11. And their words seemed to them as idle tales and they believed them not. They got to Jesus' apostles. They got to the men 
that had been with Jesus for three years. They got with the men that had seen Jesus walk the water. They got with the men that had seen Jesus feed 5,000 people. They, they got with Jesus when, when they had seen Jesus work all kind of miracles. They, 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 they got to the men that had been with Jesus when he raised Lazarus from the dead, when he changed the water to wine in, in Canaan. They, they got with Jesus when he touched the river uh, in, the, in the wood at Nam and her son got up from the dead. They, they, they saw Jesus do all of these kinds of things. But, but, but when these women came to them, they believed not. You know now, because sometimes, we have so many things in our mind that we want to believe, that we can't believe the truth. See, see, these disciples were caught up in the fact that they thought Jesus was going to be the Messiah and he was going to overthrow the Roman government and he was going to put the David Dick kingdom back in, back in order and, and he was going to declare that Israel was going to become this great ruling body. But, but Jesus didn't come here to establish any earthly kingdom. Jesus came here to establish a, a, a heavenly kingdom. So, so now you see, but these disciples, uh, they, 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 they had faith, but their faith was, was, was faulty because they was believing that Jesus was going to do something that he didn't come here to do. So when these ladies came to tell them the truth, they didn't believe them. And, and, and I can imagine what they said to these women because they didn't believe them. They, they, they probably told Mary, they said, Mary, just, just go somewhere and sit down and lie down and get you some rest. They, they probably said to Joanna, you know, just because, Joanna, just because you saw a man in a shiny suit, that don't mean that he's an angel. You, you know how it is when, when you go to somebody to tell them something and they're going to pivot and they're going to pick apart what you're saying. So, so when these excited women came to these disciples that wouldn't believe. But you see, Jesus had already figured this thing out. Jesus was already figuring out because, see, these disciples was going to have to be the ones that would carry the church from the uttermost part of the world, from Jerusalem to the uttermost part of the world. So, so, so Jesus said, listen, I'm going to have to appear 40 days in front of these disciples. Go back in, the, in, the, in Acts, the first chapter, and you will see when Jesus said, I'm going to have to appear in 40 days before these disciples to give them infallible proof that I am alive. I'm going to have to give them proof beyond the shadow of a doubt because before I can ascend and go back to heaven, I'm going to have to prove to my apostles who's going to carry this church that I'm alive because being alive, serving a Savior that is alive, is at the core of our Christian message. At the core of our Christian message is that Jesus is alive and we can face tomorrow because he is alive. So Jesus said, I, I got to do something. I, I got to appear 40 days uh, with these uh, uh, apostles so I can prove that I'm alive. You, you, you see, so, so, so we see these apostles here true. The body of Jesus was not in a tomb, but they did, that didn't mean to them, that he was, he was alive. We see true. Jesus more than once had restored someone from the dead, but they didn't believe that he could restore himself, or they said, how could he restore himself? True. Jesus said he would rise again, uh, but they didn't believe that he was talking about what he had told them on the third day. So, so they didn't believe all of the things that Jesus had told them. They knew it was true, but for some reason they had blocked it because they had this faulty belief about some re restoration uh, and overthrowing the government and establishing a kingdom down here on earth. We have to watch our faulty belief systems. We have to believe that Jesus is the Christ and that God raised him from the dead. God gave us power over all matter of sickness and disease. And when I go into the hospital to visit the sick, uh, they will be able to start letting us go back into the hospitals again. I go in there and pray the prayer of faith. And I go in there and pray that if a person is sick, that God, I don't need to look at no thing or the ask no nurse or doctor what's wrong. with Whatever's wrong, I believe that God has the power to deliver us. And that's why I believe that God has the power to deliver us from all matter of sickness. And disease. So, so you see, Jesus gave these disciples infallible proof 
that he was alive. That's why he had to appear to them. And that's why he told them in that first chapter in Acts, don't you go anywhere. You stay up into that room until the Holy Spirit come upon you. And then the Holy Spirit is going to be your teacher and going to be your guide. And then you will be able to carry my church to the othermost part of the world because you will have received the power in order to do that. But you're also going to have to have this belief system. Now you say, well, preacher, what does all this Easter message mean? That Jesus rose from the dead. Let, let me just share with you. Uh, because it, it's, it's very important that we understand. I visited a young man that some people called me some years ago that had been shot in the back of his neck by his wife's uh, brother. And he was out at Heinz Hospital. And the, the prognosis was that he was going to be, for the rest of his life, a quadriplegic. And uh, I went to visit him, and because people had said all he wanted to do was die. He had become so bitter and so evil. And I went in to talk to him, and he said, you can't tell me anything. All I want to do is die. He said, you can't tell me anything because you have never been in the place that I'm in. I told him, no, I, I've never been a quadriplegic. But I can tell you one thing. I was sent here by a man who died on Calvary's cross. And when they nailed him on the cross, they had his hands stretched out and nailed, and they had his feet nailed to the cross. And he had become a quadriplegic on Calvary's cross. But I just stopped by here to let you know that he told me to let you know that he loved you and that he's going to give you a new body if you believe in him. And, and, and he's going to take you to heaven with him, and he's going to give you a new body. This old body down here that we're in is temporary. I just want you to know that he's a living God, and he hears your prayers, and he's able to answer you, and I don't care what you're going through. He's already been through it, and this guy gave his life to Christ, and then we carried him and baptized him. We had to take him up and hold him over in the pool and baptize him, but, but he became a Christian, and he believed that Jesus is the Christ, and God would raise him from the dead. Also, a lady came to me and said her son had just been killed on the expressway, her only son. And, and, and she said, oh, this, this is a terrible thing, my only son. You know, her only son had been killed. So so, so I, I said, well, I don't know how you feel. I don't ever go around telling people you know how to feel because you don't. But I said, I know a man. I know a man from Galilee. I know a man who's God, who, who his father watched him die on Calvary's cross and I want you to know that the God that I serve told me to tell you that if you, if you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and if your son was a believer, then we will meet at Jesus' feet. I want you to know no matter what you're going through, if you lost your job and if you're broke and you don't have any money, he's a way maker. He had cattle on a thousand hills belong to him. He's, he's a way maker. Out of nowhere, he will supply all your needs according to his riches. And his glory. He is alive. And because he is alive, no matter what we are going through in this life, no matter how difficult things get to be on your job, in your life, in your relationships, yes, people going through divorce. But I just want you to know, God was a divorcee. God was a divorcee. His wife divorced him. Israel went out, hoard him on God, and God gave her a bill of divorce. So no matter what you are going through, God has been there, and God can identify with your pain and your agony. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because we live, all of the troubles and all of the things that we have, we can go to God and he'll make a way out of no way. God bless you, and God keep you. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, we come once again on this Easter Sunday, realizing the true meaning of Easter. And the true meaning of Easter is that a dead man got up out the grave and walked and that your son is alive and he's alive evermore and that we serve a true and living God. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you and God keep you. Like I said earlier, not only is this Resurrection Sunday, but this is also our Communion Sunday. Now I want you to, to find a beverage in your house and we're gonna pray on it and use that to symbolize the wine and find some bread in your house and we're gonna pray over it and have that to symbolize the broken body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
as I read this scripture, coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, down through verse 26. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same matter, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my body, and do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and you drink this wine, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. When Jesus was in the upper room with the disciples, about to go to Calvary, he said, I want to, to, to installate something the way that you can always remember me. And first he took the bread. He said, this bread is going to symbolize my broken body. Yes, my body is going to be broken on Calvary, going up Golgotha Hill. You know, my body is going to be beaten beyond recognition. But I just want to, you to remember what happened to me on Calvary. But I want you to remember that by, by doing this as often as you see fit. So in the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, eat it all. And then he took the cup. He said, I'm going to write a new order. He said, and the reason that this thing happened during Passover time is because I am the new pastor lamb. He says, Shannon, I'm going to die for all your sins in the past, all your sins in the present, and all your sins in the future. And he says, the veil in the, in, in the temple in the Holy of Holies was torn from top to bottom. And the reason it was torn from top to bottom, because we have to realize it was God who, who had it, who, who tore the curtain, who tore the veil. Uh, so now we have access to God. We can go to God and cry, Abba, Father. But he also wanted us to realize that he's writing a new order. We don't have to make any more sacrifices. We just have to realize that his son is the Christ, the son of the living God. Now let us commune right now with the wine. In the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, drink it all. I know, I know it was the blood. Listen, you all continue to stay in touch with us. Our phone number is right down here. You can see where my hand is pointing. The telephone number to the church is down here, our address, and all of our communication. So you can give us a call. Uh, we have people calling us from all over the country. And also, if you're not in a church, we can take you in, People's Community Church. All of our stuff is done virtual now. So no matter where you live, you can still become part of our church. God is just blessing us with our church. We, we're looking at uh, trying to open up our building uh, maybe sometime soon. And we'll keep you posted on that. But God is in the blessing business. May God bless you and may God keep you. And I want to say one more thing to you before we leave. Jesus is alive. Amen.